Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers, from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today, Universal or Cosmic Force, Part 1, from Sri Aurobindo. The Universal or Cosmic Forces. Universal forces means all forces, good or bad, favorable or hostile, of light or of darkness, that move in the cosmos. The cosmic forces, here, whether good or bad, are forces of the ignorance. Above them is the truth consciousness that can only manifest when ego and desire are overcome. It is the force from the divine truth consciousness that must descend. The higher peace, light, knowledge, purity, power, ananda, must work upon the cosmic forces in the individual so as to change them and substitute the truth forces in place of the ordinary working. They, the cosmic forces, act on everyone according to the person's nature and his will and consciousness. It, knowledge of the working of the cosmic forces, is necessary. It comes of itself as one gets more and more forward in the cosmic consciousness. They, pain and misery, are perhaps rather the result of the action of universal forces. But in a certain sense, grief and pain may be said to be universal forces, for there are waves of these things that arrive and invade the being often without apparent cause. The universal forces move by their own force and the consciousness within them, but there is also the cosmic spirit who supports them and determines by his onlook and disposing will their play, although the direct action is left to the forces. It is the play of the universal Prakriti, with the universal Purusha watching behind it. In the individual also, there is the individual Purusha who can, if he wills, not merely assent to the play of Prakriti, but accept or reject or will for its change. All that is in the play itself, as we see it here. There is something above, but the action of that is an intervention rather than a moment-to-moment -moment control. It can become a constant, direct control only when one replaces the play of the forces by the government of the divine. One can live in contact with the divine, even amidst the universal forces. But to live in the divine, one must be able to rise beyond the lower universal nature, or to call down the divine consciousness here. The beginnings are difficult for most, and at no time is it really easy. There is only one force or energy here in reality. What is called the individual energy does not belong to the individual, but to the one universal power.
in the one infinite energy itself, a distinction has to be made between the divine force that descends from above the mind and the inferior universal energy with all its different forms, movements, waves, and currents that come into you from outside. The inferior energy proceeds from the divine Shakti, but it has fallen from the truth of its source and has no longer its direct guidance. When these universal energies come into touch with the divine force, rise to meet it and allow it to take hold of them and occupy and change them, then they are purified and uplifted and transformed and become a movement of the divine force. When they are not in touch with the divine force, not obedient to it, but act for themselves, they are unenlightened, erring, impure, mixed, and confused powers of the ignorance. <clears throat> Always, therefore, keep in touch with the divine force. The best thing for you is to do that simply and allow it to do its own work. Wherever necessary, it will take hold of the inferior energies and purify them. At other times it will empty you of them and fill you with itself. But if you let your mind take the lead and discuss and decide what is to be done, you will lose touch with the divine force and the lower energies will begin to act for themselves and all go into confusion and a wrong movement.